What online strategy should you use to find prospects for your home-based business? What's going on guys? This is Dorico Cherry coming at you from DoricoCherry.com. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you some strategies, some simple strategies that you can use to actually find pretty much all the leads, prospects that you can handle for your home-based business. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so got my notes right here. And uh, like I said, I wanna make sure that I give you guys all this good content right here so you can actually take these tips that I share with you and go and apply them in your business and get some results. All right, so uh, the first one, Facebook Lives. Now, Facebook is pretty much the king when it comes down to social media. Um, you can do pretty much everybody in mama's on Facebook. With Facebook Lives, you can actually have hundreds if not thousands of people on those things at any given time. Now, years ago, that was next to impossible for someone who's br who was brand new. The only way you could actually uh, get that many people in front of a presentation was to you know throw, throw some type of a local event and invite people out, and maybe they invite some people. And you can still do that stuff to this day. But with Facebook Live, I mean, you can do you can basically turn on your cell phone, hit go live, and be talking to hundreds of thousands of people at any given time. I mean, it's just crazy, you know. Um, now. With Facebook Lives, they're great short-term strategies, meaning that you would you wouldn't want to use Facebook as a as a long-term thing because the the lifespan of a Facebook Live is very short, meaning that you know you got about 24 hours and then pretty much that video is just kind of going off into the internet abyss, and so it makes it real difficult to reference that content. So say like if you did a really great Facebook Live. And, you know, a couple months later, you know, someone maybe asked you a question or something and you're just like, well, you know, I answered that in the Facebook Live. Well, good luck going back, trying to search through all that stuff. It's not searchable content, which in my in my opinion is, uh, like I say, it's pretty bad. Now, there are ways that you can actually double up and actually repurpose that content, which I highly suggest you do if you decide to do the Facebook Live. But like I say, a great, 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 great short term strategy but not so great for a long-term strategy, okay? And most people use Facebook Lives the wrong way. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how to use Facebook Lives. Uh, the way most people actually use Facebook Lives is that they get on there and they pitch. You know, they're pitching, join my business, or, you know, uh, you know, talking about their product. Well, I don't know, this ain't really a product, but, you know, they're talking about their product uh, or, or doing something, you know, just spammy like that. Now, instead of doing that, what you want to do is actually lead with education, actually teach something, right? So solve a problem, answer a question that people may have. Um, now, I'm not saying you can't actually showcase your product, which that's fine, but majority of the time should be about education. What, do, what will the viewers get out of that? What will they get out of their video from, you know, once they walk away from your video, what, would they, what can they take away from it? So lead with education on that, all right? Um, the next strategy, uh, this kind of falls into Facebook lives is actually uploading videos to YouTube. Now, the main difference between YouTube and Facebook lives is that YouTube videos are, have a, are a good long-term strategy, meaning that the content is searchable. YouTube is owned by Google. Google's a search platform. So YouTube is built on a searchable platform, meaning that you can go and type something in Google and your video possibly could come back as an answer to the question. Way more powerful, way more leveraged than using a Facebook Live. Now, keep this in mind. With YouTube videos, you won't have a thousand people, you know, watch your videos when you upload it unless you have some type of big audience already. If you're brand new, you're gonna have very little videos on that thing at the beginning. Now. The good thing about it is over time, those videos can pick up steam. Meaning that say like, you know, you upload a video on Monday and then six months from now, you know, that first week you maybe only get five views, but six months from now, you know, those five views may can turn into 200 views or 2000 views, you know, I don't know. So that's one of the, that's one of the, the main uh, key differences versus YouTube videos versus you know Facebook Lives. Now, what you can do is take your Facebook Lives if you want to download those guys. Once you got you know you get done recording them um, and download them, and then actually re-upload them to YouTube and maybe actually embed them on a blog or something like that. That is a great way to actually repurpose that content. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds 
when you're doing that short term Facebook live, which is very powerful, you know, you know, thousands of people on there. And then you take that content and put it on an evergreen platform like YouTube to where you can actually double up and get that long term exposure off of that. Again, with YouTube, you want to follow a simple four step uh, process. Same thing with like, I don't even know if I mentioned this for the Facebook lives, but when you want to uh, do videos, I always follow a four step process, which is intro, question, content, which ask, uh, actually answers that question, and then a call to action. Same four step process for YouTube videos or, in, uh, or uh, Facebook live videos. Okay. There's no different. It's just a, a just a different platform. All right. Uh, the next strategy that you can use. Now, this is a long-term strategy, which, but this is my favorite strategy is blogging. Uh, blogging, when you actually do blog posts, the, these are the type of things. Uh, this is called evergreen content. YouTube videos are called evergreen content too, but evergreen content is that content that actually works for you uh, years on down the road. It pays you years on down the road. It generates leads for you years on down the road. You do the work one time and it pays you over and over and over again. Unlike Facebook lives, Facebook lives, they don't do that. They're not going to generate you no revenue a year from now. You know, they'll help build your audience, but don't expect to get paid off of no Facebook live or anything like that. It's very short term right there. Um, with blogging, uh, granted that you have a self-hosted WordPress site now is a little different than having something, having a blog on uh, WordPress.com or Blogger.com. Those are not self-hosted. Those are actually hosted with someone else or another company. And that actually means you have to follow the guidelines. With a self-hosted WordPress blog, you actually own the content. You own every little aspect of that blog. And the only way that you can be shut down is by not paying your hosting bill. Okay, so you can pretty much market however you want to. You can say whatever you want to. You don't have to worry about anything, really. Now, the only downside to blogging, there's two downsides to blogging, is that, and I don't even really call them downside, uh, downsides, but just some things you need to be aware of. With blogging, it will take some time. So you're not going to write 10 blog posts and then the bucks are just going to start rolling in. Hell, you might not even write 100 blog posts and the bucks is going to start rolling in. It's different for everybody. Uh, it could take years. Now, a lot of times that people that you see that have these real big blogs or been real successful with the blogging, they've been blogging from my, from what I can tell or from what I know at this point, they've been blogging for 10 plus years. You know, very rarely you're going to see someone, you know, start a blog, you know, six months ago when the thing just booming, unless they already had some type of big following somewhere else and they just had a surge of traffic. But for the new person, that's usually not the case. It takes years to actually build up a blog, you know, to start getting traffic to it and actually start seeing results from it. So, uh, but that's not always typical. Uh, like I said, your mileage may vary. You very well could start a blog today and in six months from now, uh, you know, have traffic coming out the wazoo. I don't know, but I've never seen it. It usually always takes years for, you know, blogs to really pick up steam. But they are the number one way of actually finding prospects and generating leads online is having your own self-hosted WordPress blog, okay? Um, the next strategy I wanna talk about is Twitter. Now, I'll link to some training for Twitter. Uh, I don't know if it'll be in this YouTube description or somewhere on my blog, but uh, here's the gist with Twitter. I won't go into a whole, whole lot of details, but I'll give you some tips here for using it. So. For one, Twitter is a fast-paced social media site, meaning that you can tweet something or you, you know put put a post up, and in just a few minutes that post is gone. I mean, it gets buried. I mean, Twitter moves fast. So, what I've learned is that you can actually use a piece of software, and this is what I use. I use a piece of software called Social Media Jukebox, and what that does, it does just like what it says. It's a jukebox. So I have my jukebox loaded up with uh, quotes and my blog posts. Now, my Twitter is all about uh, educating people, right? So I put my blog posts out and majority, all my blog posts are about education. I'm teaching people how to do things, how to's and, you know, what to do, answering questions. And I rotate them on my blog. I mean, on my Twitter account. So. If you didn't have that software on there, it would be very, very tough for you to actually stay in front of the people on Twitter because it moves so fast. That's the key thing with Twitter is that you got to be able to stay in front of people. And, you know, you may have 
uh, a set of people who come on that morning, um, you know, a set of people that comes on that uh, afternoon and that evening because Twitter, you know, is all over the world. So being able to stay in front of them consistently is the key to it. Twitter sends a ton of traffic to my to my blog. Uh, I get leads from Twitter. Um, I make great com uh, connections with people on Twitter. Twitter. I have a lot of conversations. Uh, I have a very active uh, Twitter following. But like I said, uh, I have software that actually manages my Twitter account for me. And again, I used um, Twitter just like any other social media platform that I'm actually on, is that I lead with value. I never pitch a product. I never pitch my opportunity. Um, I always try to solve a problem on any social media platform. It doesn't matter what you're using, whether it be Instagram, Twitter, Facebook Lives, whatever. Always lead with education, and it'll help you actually stand out from the crowd. Um, so... And just let me say this one last little thing about uh, social media platforms. Now, thing you want to keep in mind about no matter if you do Facebook Lives, if you do Twitter, YouTube, um, Instagram, any of that stuff, the biggest thing that you got to remember is that you don't own any of those profiles, meaning that you have to follow the policies and guidelines of the platform, whatever platform you own. Now, the way I always like to use it is that I like to think of social media, I think I like to think of my blog as a center, the center of a wheel. And all the social media outlets are just spokes that lead back to my blog. You know, my goal is to get them from social media, my social media profile onto my blog, where I control 100% of that on kind of the content that they see there. Uh, like I say, all of these strategies that I share with you are really great ways to find prospects. Um, my biggest Thing that I want to that I want you to take away from this training is that make sure that you just pick one strategy out of these that I just shared with you, uh, and then we, we'll recap them here in just a few. But just pick one, and you know, put a hundred and ten percent effort into learning how to master that strategy, get some results from that strategy before you add anything else to it. Because if you try to add too much stuff at one time, then you start to feel overwhelmed. You know, you're doing you know you're putting a little bit of energy over here. You're putting a little bit of energy over here and you're not really giving uh, the strategy 100% focus, 110% of your efforts and focus, which means you can get a lot better results if you actually did that. So let me just recap the strategies of, for finding prospects that you can use. You can do Facebook Lives. The number one quickest way of actually getting those, uh, getting people, getting, your, uh, getting yourself in front of a lot of people uh, at a, in a short amount of time. Uh, record and upload videos to YouTube, uh, very leveraged, evergreen content, searchable content, unlike Facebook Lives. Uh, blogging, my favorite way. Just remember, blogging is a long-term strategy, not nothing short-term. If you need to you know, generate, generate leads fast, I would suggest doing the Facebook Lives, uh, in this order, Facebook Lives and then YouTube, okay? Um, you can use Instagram. I didn't touch a whole lot on Instagram, but same principles apply. Lead with education on that. You can actually use uh, Instagram for finding prospects and then Twitter. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Hope you got some value out of it. Um, if you did, make sure you drop me a comment below. Let me know uh, what your thoughts are. Did you enjoy the training? Did I suck? You know, let me know some other things that you'd like me to talk about or some things uh, that you would like to see me uh, put content out about. Um, maybe some things that's working for me in my business. If you want, if you guys want to hear about that stuff, like I said, leave me a comment below. Uh, if you're inside, if you're building a home-based business and you're looking for some prospects and you want to know where to find them, make sure you head on over to DoricoCherry.com. Throw your name and email address in there and you'll get access to a free audio. 13 ways to find leads online for your home-based business. Totally free just for you know throwing in your name and email address. And uh, that's it. Um, that's all for this video. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.